some of the myths of sabr that we have in our community. Okay? Let me give you an analogy. Imagine that you walk into your house or maybe you're sleeping in your house and you hear a smoke alarm. Yeah? So you wake up, you see smoke, then you see fire. Now imagine that you see this fire and you see the smoke and then you stand there and you fold your arms like this and you say, MashaAllah, I have so much sabr, I'm going to do nothing. I'm going to do nothing about this. I'm going to stand here and I'm going to watch as my house burns down because MashaAllah, I have sabr. And then you're going to have people come around you, collecting around you and saying, MashaAllah, look at her sabr. She's doing absolutely nothing about her house burning down. Is that sabr? Not a, not a trick question, guys. Is that sabr? Is that the meaning of sabr? That I'm standing in my own burning house and I'm doing nothing. That's not what sabr is. What should I do if there's smoke and fire in my house? Anyone? Get a fire extinguisher. Call the fire department. Get some water. Do something, yeah? And that is your sabr. Because we have this myth, we have this misunderstanding that sabr means go back to sleep. Your house is burning down, have sabr sister, go back to sleep. Have sabr sister, do nothing, just stand, just stand there and watch. We have this myth, this idea that sabr means keep drinking the poison but keep a smile on your face. Do you know I actually heard that someone say this to me? She says, my mother told me that I should be able to drink poison and keep a smile on my face. This is a lot of our culture, but it is not Islam. It is not Islam and it is not sabr. It is toxic culture and it is to be passive in a way that you stand while your own house is burning down and you don't look for any fire extinguisher and you don't take any action. This isn't Islam. This is not what sabr is. Let me ask you a question. What did Hajar do? What did Hajar do? Hajar, she was in the middle of the desert, right? She was with her child and no one is there. There's no water. There's no one. So my question to you, what did she do? Did she lay down and say, I have so much sabr. I'm just going to lay here. Did she say, I have so much tawakkul that I'm just going to sit here and do nothing? Tell me what she did. She got up and she ran between Safa and Marwa. And did she do it one time? How many times did she do it? Did she do it two times? Did she do it even five times? Seven, 100% on your pop quiz, yes. Seven times. <coughs> do you understand the lesson or no? She's not being passive. She's not saying, I have sabr, so I'm going to be passive and do nothing. She's not saying, I have tawakkur, so I'm going to be passive and do nothing. Oh, I'm going to wait here till Allah saves me. Of course she had tawakkur. Of course she had sabr, but she got up and she did something. And we are told to follow in her footsteps, right? You cannot complete Hajj or Umrah, man or woman, without following in her footsteps. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if you see something wrong, try to change it with your hand. And if you cannot change it with your hand, then try to change it with your tongue. By, by at least speaking out against it, if it's wrong. If it's unjust, if it's abusive, 
And he says, if you cannot, you're not able to do either of those things, at least hate it in your heart. And this is the weakest of Iman. So what is he teaching us? He's teaching us that part of Iman is taking action against injustice and abuse and anything that's wrong. Ithm, anything that's wrong. Munkar. Munkar is like a general word for anything bad. But we're not told if you see something bad, turn the other cheek. You see, that's not our religion. He didn't say when you see munkar, turn the other cheek. He said try to change it, take action, don't be passive. <coughs> There's another common myth. Um, or false definition of sabr. And that is that sabr means that you don't feel any emotion. That you, never, you don't feel any grief. You don't feel, you basically become a robot. So I'll give you an example to illustrate. Say you're at a funeral and you see some family members at the funeral. One of the family members is crying. Another family member is showing no emotion, just no emotion, straight face, no emotion, shut down. What do many of us think or say? Well, we would probably look at the one who's crying and say, have sabr, have sabr. And we'll look at the one who's showing no emotion and say, ma sha Allah, look at the sabr. Am I right? We have somehow linked sabr with showing no emotion. Sabr with not crying. Sabr with being stoic. But this is a false definition. Can I prove it to you? Yaqub alayhi salam. Well, just open the Quran to Surah Yusuf. Yaqub alayhi salam had sabr on Jamil. He had beautiful patience. And yet, he cried until he went blind from grief. Yes? He says to Allah, Innama ashku bathi wa huzni ilallah. So he's saying to Allah, Indeed, I complain of my grief and my sadness to Allah. So what does that mean? It means that he had sabr, he had sabr. In fact, he had beautiful patience, sabr and jameel. And at the same time he cried and at the same time he experienced grief. So what does it mean? It means that sabr is not the lack of emotion. Sabr doesn't mean you can't cry. Sabr doesn't mean you can't feel grief. Sabr is that you do not complain against the decree of Allah. You understand? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he was grieving, in his, in his famous hadith, what does he say? When he lost someone he loved, he said the eyes shed tears and the heart feels grief, but the tongue does not utter except what is pleasing to Allah. That is actually the perfect balance, the perfect combination. He said the eyes shed tears and the heart feels grief, but the tongue does not utter except what is pleasing to Allah. That is sabr.